Okay, so let's begin with some context. Isaiah focuses in this chapter on warning Babylon. Assyria and Babylon were the two most powerful empires at that time. Assyria was known for its warfare and Babylon, while also being an invader, was the cultural hub of that time. The pagan religion that started in Babylon is the one that spread eventually all across the Middle East. When Isaiah talks about Babylon, he is talking about two things, the nation of Babylon and also the culture, the mindset and the spiritual apostasy of the people of Babylon. Most of these two chapters are focused on the fall of Babylon. The type of destruction that Isaiah prophecies happening in Babylon is of a similar type to what he says will happen before the second coming of the Lord as well. Verse number one, the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. Isaiah is prophesying that he saw the fall of Babylon, the judgment that will happen on its people's heads. Verse number two, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Here Isaiah tells the Lord's people to hold up a battle flag or a sign on the high mountains in the land, meaning in the temple of the Lord. Shout out to your army, give them a visual sign by your hand and tell them to go ahead and attack the gates of the city of Babylon. Again, if this verse was applied to the latter days, it could be calling out to the enemies, shaking their hands or waving your own and inviting them to come and turn towards the house of the Lord. Verse number three, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger is not upon them that rejoice in my highness. This verse seems particularly focused on the latter days. The Lord speaks through Isaiah now saying, I have commanded and told my righteous and my brave people what they need to do. And he says, I'm not angry with those who are joyful about my rule, about, about my rule, about the role that I have to play in the world. Verse number four, the noise of the multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts must rip the hosts of the battle. The number of people who gather together in the temple to battle, to fight on the side of righteousness, make a noise like all the nations from all over the world were there together. And the Lord gathers his army from them. Verse number five. They come from a far country, from the ends of heaven. Yea, the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Isaiah says that the people who come to join the Lord's army will come from all over the world and they will be armed by the Lord with his powers to allow them to destroy all evil and wickedness. And this again is a latter day prophecy. Verses 6 to 13. Again, the ancient city of Babylon with all its superficial glory and its pride and its arrogance and its worldliness is symbolic of the days that will be experienced in our world in the latter days. These verses describe the effects of the Lord's anger and power when they're directed against spiritual Babylon in the last days, in the latter days. Verse number six, how ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the almighty. Isaiah starts speaking again, warning people to cry out because the day that the Lord judges and punishes people is almost here. And before the Lord comes to reign on earth, he will destroy all the wicked and the unrighteous. Verse number seven, Therefore shall all your hands be faint, every man's heart shall melt, and so all men's hands will tremble, and their hearts will melt in Babylon, in the area where there is spiritual wickedness, because all who are wicked will fear, because they know what's going to happen to them. Verse number 8, And they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrow shall, shall take hold of them. They shall be amazed one at the other, and their faces shall be as flames. All the people in the city of Babylon will feel pain and sorrow because of their fear at what is going to happen to them. And they will look at each other in shock and their faces would reflect the shame and the fear and the guilt that they feel. Verse number nine, behold the day of the Lord cometh, cruel with its wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Out of it. For look, the day of the Lord is coming, that day when he judges and he rewards and he punishes all men according to the way that they have lived. And the punishments will feel cruel to the ones who have sinned and gone, gone against his teachings because they will feel just how angry he is with them. Isaiah says that the Lord will destroy the wicked sinful people and make the land a wasteland where nothing grows. 
Verse number 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. On the days of the Lord's second coming, on that day of judgment, the stars, the sun, and the moon will not shine and give out any light. There will be no heavenly host proclaiming anything. There will be darkness throughout the land. Verse number 11. And I will punish the world for evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay down the haughtiness of the terrible. And Isaiah says that the Lord says he will punish the evil and the wicked for all their sins, for all their wrongdoings. He will make the proud completely humble themselves and he will put a stop to all their wrongdoings and to all their arrogant and their wicked behavior. Verse number 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of a field. The Lord says that there will be very few men left on earth and those that are, who are still left on earth will be those who have, been, who have survived the burning fires of the Lord and they have been purified and exalted by him. Ophir was an area at that point which was known for its gold mines. Verse number 13. Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of the hosts and in the days of in the day of his fierce anger. In his anger, the Lord will make the heavens tremble and make the earth shake, meaning possibly earthquakes or destruction of some sort that comes from space. This is a common prophecy that we see written about the time of the second coming of the Lord. Verse number 11. And it shall be as a chaste roe and as a sheep that no man take up. And they shall every man turn to, their own, to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. Isaiah says that the people will be so afraid at this point, at the time of the second coming of the Lord, with all the burning and the fires of purification that come, with all the earthquakes, that they will run and hide like a deer that is chased by a hunter or like a sheep that's lost and hid and away from his tribe. And the wicked will turn to their own lands and the, to all the places they can think of to hide and the righteous to the temples in the kingdom of God. Verse number 15. And everyone that is proud shall be thrust through Yea, and everyone that is joined to the wicked shall fall by the sword. And every person who is proud will be killed, and all that are wicked or connected to the wicked ones will also be killed. Verse number 16. And their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes, their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. The children of the wicked will be killed, their properties will be destroyed, and their wives also will be tortured and raped because of how wicked the men were. Verse number 17, Behold, I will stir up the means against them, which shall not regard silver and gold, nor shall they delight in it. The Lord said that he would encourage the means, the Persians, to attack Babylon, to destroy the city with all its buildings. These Persians were not attacking to steal gold or silver. They were not interested in what possessions, material possessions they could acquire. What they really wanted was the power of having overcome city after city and having conquered nations. They were looking for that, that power more than anything else. And, and the Lord used that against the people who were wicked. Verse number 18, their vow shall also dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. The Persian soldiers will kill all the young men, even the young children, without thinking about them only being children. No one will be spared or let alone. The Persians, when they invade Babylon, they will completely destroy all the Babylonian people. Verse number 19, and Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the land of Babylon, the land set, set up by the Chaldean rulers, known for its beauty and its riches and its gardens and its buildings, will be destroyed entirely and abandoned, just like the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were when they were destroyed by the Lord. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were often held as examples, as to you know what can happen to other cities because of what happens when people turn against turn evil and turn away from god verse number 20 and shall never be inhabited neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation neither shall the arabian pitch tent there neither shall the shepherds make their fold there and the city of babylon will never again be lived in no one will come back and not even the nomadic people will come back and live there temporarily. It will be well and truly abandoned and forgotten and destroyed. 
Verse number 21. But the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and the owls shall dwell there, and the satyrs shall dance there. And only the wild animals of the desert shall live there. And, and where, where there were houses of the Babylonian nobles, only wild animals and owls and ghosts will exist. Verse number 22. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their pleasant palaces. Hurt and her time is near to come and her day shall not be prolonged. For I will destroy her speedily. Yea, I will be for I will be merciful unto my people, but the wicked shall perish. And Isaiah ends this chapter by saying that only hyenas and other wild animals would be left in the land of Babylon to cry out, to make a noise, to live in all those abandoned homes and palaces. For the Lord will destroy Babylon suddenly through these Persians, sparing only the good and righteous people, the people of Israel, who the Persians will return and allow to return back to their own kingdom.